Hello friends, welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on soil and water conservation engineering. I am Rajendra Singh, Professor in Agriculture and Food Engineering Department of IIT Kharagpur. We are in week 4, lecture 20 and today we will solve problems on broad base terrace. Now just to remind you of the course content that we covered in this week up till now, in lecture 16 we started the week with introducing terrace. In lecture 17 we covered the concepts corresponding to bench terraces. In lecture 18 we used the concepts learned in lecture 17 to design uh, bench terraces that is we solve problems dealing with the design of bench terraces. In lecture 19 we dealt with broad based terraces and to today's lecture we will solve certain problems dealing with the design of broad based terraces. Let us start with problem number 1 and this problem states that for a broad based terrace constructed on 7 percent land slope the channel depth is 0.3 meters and the width of terrace is 6 meters. Compute the cut and fill heights and the slope ratios for the front slope and back slope assuming a balanced cross section. So, that means it is a broad based terrace uh, constructed on 7 percent land slope, channel depth and channel width of the terrace are, are already given and we have to compute the cut and fill heights and the slope ratios for the front slope and the back slope and we have to assume a balanced cross section and balanced cross section means the cut is equal to fill that is this is the information which is already given in this particular problem. So, once again the data given are land slope s equals to 7 percent, channel depth h equal to 0.3 meters, terrace width w is 6 meters and balanced cross section. So, we have been given h is known to us, w is known to us and of course, the land slope which is here s that is known to us. So, these are three things which are known to us and of course, balanced cross section. So, that simply means cut is equal to fill that is also uh, known to us. So, that means this cut is equal to this fill that is known to us. And uh, for this section when it is a uh, width of the, uh, the when all the three widths are same that when means when, when the section is balanced or the cross section is balanced then we know the relationship between cut fill the channel depth and uh, terrace width which is given by equation 3 which we saw in the previous lecture and that reads at c plus f equals to h plus s times w where c is cut f is fill c is cut f is fill h is the uh, depth of the channel and w is the terrace width and s is the land slope. Uh, so, this is what it is and as per this problem statement it is a balanced cross section. So, c is equal to f that is cut is equal to f. So, from this relationship c equal to f is h plus s w divided by 2 because c plus uh, we can also write 2 c equals to or 2 f equal to h plus s w or in this case we are writing c equal to f equal to h plus s w by 2. And in this we know the value of h, we know the value of s, we know the value of w. So, that means by just by putting the values of h, s and w we can get the values of c and f uh, that is cut and fill. And so, c equals to f which is equal to h is 0.3 s is 7 percent that means 0.07, w is width of the terrace which is given as 6 meters. So, by putting the value we get c equal to f is equal to 0.36 meters. So, that is cut or fill is 0.36 meters. So, that means uh, from the um, this is the bottom of the channel that is measured at the channel center line, the bottom of the channel, uh, channel and this is the original land slope the di vertical difference between two is, is cut. Similarly, here the, the terrace center line the top of the ridge and the original uh, land slope at this particular vertical line the vertical difference is 
the fill. So, cut and fill values we have obtained in this problem. Now, we have to obtain the slopes. So, from the geometry for the front slope the change in elevation over w is equal to h. So, this is the front slope. So, the this is w and elevation change from here to here this is h basically. So, front slope will be S f is w by h and w value is known h value is known w is 6 h is 0.3. So, that means it is 20. So, front slope ratio comes out to be 20 is to 1 that is 20 horizontal to 1 vertical. So, we are always in, in this subject typically we represent slopes as horizontal is to vertical ratio. For the black back slope if you see the change in elevation over w has two components one is of course, h, h this h is already there, but at the same time there is a elevation difference of the original land slope basically. So, that we have to take into account over the width which is the same. So, it is h plus s w. So, that is why back slope is w divided by h plus w s. So, 6 divided by 0.3 which is h w is 6 s is 0 0.07 and by calculating this we get 8.33 s b equals to 8.33. So, back slope ratio is 8.33 is to 1. So, front slope ratio comes out to be 20 is to 1, back slope ratio comes out to be 8.33 is to 1. So, that means, cut and fill is equal to 0.66 meters, front slope ratio is 20 is to 1 and back slope ratio is 8.33 is to 1. So, these are the answers which we have obtained for this particular problem. Now, we go to second problem which says that design a 300 meter long variable graded terrace for a land having average slope of 3 percent. The maximum permissible velocity of water in the terrace channel is 60 centimeter per second. The intensity of 1 hour rainfall expected during 10 years recurrent interval is 10 centimeter per hour. The region is less humid and soils are normal. So, that means, means we have to we have to design a 300 meter long variable graded terrace for a land slope of 3 percent. The maximum permissible velocity is given here 60 centimeter per uh, second. Uh, intensity of 1 hour rainfall for 10 years recurrence interval is given as 10 centimeter per hour and the region is identified as less humid and soils are normal. So, that means you remember we had a condition for vertical interval. So, that simply shows that we can straight away use the one of the equations recommended for um, graded terraces. So, the data once again uh, with the, their symbol length of variable graded terrace L small l is 300 meters, land slope S is 3 percent maximum permissible velocity of water which is nothing but the non erosive velocity we call is 60 centimeter per second and intensity of 1 hour 10 year rainfall is 10 centimeter per second. The region is less humid and with normal soils. So, first thing we need to estimate is vertical intervals and uh, vertical intervals and for this purpose we may use equation to previous lecture which where there was equation given for vertical interval for less humid regions and normal soil. So, h bar thus relationship vertical interval equals to s plus 6 by 10 where s is the land slope the land slope which is 3 percent in this case. So, putting the value of s we can calculate the vertical interval is 3 plus 6 9 by 10 that is 0.9 meters. And the relationship between h i and v i we already know because uh, we know that uh, h i and v i they are related uh, with reference to s percent land slope. So, this is v i this is h i. So, v i by h i is equal to s by 100. So, this we have seen many times. So, from this relationship h i is equal to 100 v i by s. So, same here 100 v i by s 
and v i value we already know, s value we already know. So, putting these values we get horizontal interval equals to 30 meters. So, for this particular given conditions vertical interval is 0 0.9 meters and horizontal interval is 30 meters. Now, step 2 is let the grades of the variable graded terrace be we can use the standard table we already saw table 2 in lecture 19 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and 2 for each quarter length from outlet respectively and this uh, we can see uh, we can also see the table basically by looking into the table uh, because here the channel grades were recommended for variable grade traces based on US NRCS recommendations. So, our terrace length is 300 meters that means we fall here in this 262 to 360 range and then the recommended uh, grades are in percent 0 0.5 for lower quarter, 0 0.4 for second quarter, 0 0.3 for third quarter and 0 0.2 for the upper quarter. So, right from uh, upstream to downstream the slope is increasing 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 slowly. So, this is these are the recommended grades which we can accept basically. And uh, uh, so, that means these are the grades which we have chosen. Next step 3 we need to determine the peak rate of runoff and obviously, for this we use rational method we already know that whenever we need peak, re peak rate of runoff we use rational method which is q equals to c i a by 36, uh, where c is the runoff coefficient q is, is in cubic meter per second that is peak runoff rate in cubic meter per second, c, I, c is the runoff coefficient, i is the rainfall intensity equal to time concentration unit is centimeter per hour and a is the drainage area and the unit used is hectares and using this, this is the rational formula using this we can use the calculate the peak rate of runoff. So, for this case uh, the drainage area that is the terrace area which is x which x the drainage area is nothing but multiplication of length of the terrace and the horizontal interval because the area between two terraces that is used as a drainage area for uh, the designing the uh, graded uh, channel and that means our length is given as 300 meters h i we have calculated as 30 meters. So, the area comes out to be 9000 square meters and or because the unit required in q equals to c i a is hectares. So, we are again converting this 9000 square meter into 0 0.9 hectares that is divided by 10,000 because 10,000 square meter is equal to 1 hectare. So, it comes out to be 0 0.9 hectare. Now, we need to determine the time of concentration because I definition says that it is uh, uh, peak rainfall intensity for duration equal to time of concentration and for time of concentration we use Kirpik formula that is the standard formula we use and HP this formula T c is equal to 0 0.0195 L to the power 0 0.77 S to the power minus minus 0 0.385 where L is the total flow length and S is the uh, total uh, slope over the flow length. So, the total flow length typically is length times plus horizontal interval and that every time we have seen that uh, in between Two, 2 graded terraces will be built here, here and then the second one is let us say here. So, obviously, this is the horizontal interval, this is the horizontal interval between these two. So, this is the area that x is the terrace area. So, the flow has to tra traverse this distance and uh, along the along the channel perpendicular longitudinal distance has to traverse is length of the terrace. So, that is why that is the total flow length is h i plus the length along the channel. So, this is 300 plus 30 or 330 meters and the total slope is elevation difference again the elevation difference here plus the grade of the channel we have to consider and the total length for calculating the slope. So, h is the difference in elevation between most remote point and outer. So, most remote point could be considered the upstream of the previous terrace. Now, coming to elevation difference between adjacent terraces over h i is land slope is 3 percent. So, 0 0.03 times 30. So, 0 0.9 meters it comes out to be straight away 
and over the channel length we have already decided the slopes that is 0.5 percent mm, this should this should be read as 0.4 percent so 0.4 percent then 0.3 percent and 0.2 percent so from table we read 0.2 0.3 0.4 and uh, 0.5 percent so that is why in the and and total 300 meters so the quarter length is 75 meters so that means 0 0.005 times 75 0 0.004 times 75 0 0 0.003 times 75, 0 0 0.002 times 75 and then calculated slopes of this. So, the total elevation difference is this plus sum of these 4. So, all sums comes out to be 1.95 meters. So, total elevation difference is 1.95 meters, total length is 330 meters. The so slope over the total flow length is 0 0.006 so that is the slope we calculate. So, that simply means that now putting the because we know L now we know S. So, putting the value in Kirpich formula that is 0 0.0195 330 to the power 0 0.77 0 0.006 to the power minus 0 0.385 we get time of concentration equals to 12.15 meters for the given area. Now, we have been given 1 hour intensity uh, is 10 centimeter per hour and we have to obtain the intensity corresponding to 12.15 meters. So, like in the previous uh, uh, class where we solve problem on bench terraces and we use the standard nomograph. So, the same standard nomograph we have to use here which relates 1 hour rainfall intensity, 1 hour rainfall intensity to rainfall intensity for different durations and the durations are given here 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 120 minutes and so on. So, for, uh, for, for our case it is uh, 1 hour intensity is 10 centimeter per hour. So, that means 1 hour intensity. So, our value will lie on this horizontal line 10 corresponding to 10 centimeter per hour and we have to look for 12.15 minutes. So, this is 5 minute line. So, this is one point of reference and this is 15 minutes this is one point of reference and we have to find uh, this is 10 will be somewhere here. So, 12.5 will be somewhere here. So, more than 20 somewhere here. So, roughly we are approximately we are saying this value is 22 centimeter per hour. So, we are assuming uh, or rather from this nomograph we are reading the value that corresponding to time of concentration the intensity the peak intensity is 22 centimeter per hour and that is the value we will use in our CIA by 36. So, that means now we can use uh, the runoff rational formula and for that we, we assume C equals to 0 0.3. So, now C i a by 36. So, C is assumed as 0.3, i we have just now approximated as 22, the area we have calculated is 0.9 hectares. So, putting the value we get q value equals to 0 0.165 cubic meter per second. This is this should be read as cubic meter per second not the m 3. So, it is a cubic meter per second or cumic which is the unit of discharge because here we are calculating the peak runoff rate. Now, uh, once we have uh, calculated that uh, discharge which our terrace should be able to handle or great channel should be able to handle, then we have to reach come to defining the terrace cross section. So, for terrace cross section we need to select the cut front and back slopes. So, for this again we can use the standard table that is table 3 provided in lecture number 19 that is the uh, US SCS recommendation. And from this table, we will we'll just see the table. The table is here. So, from this table, the land slope is <coughs> ours is 3 percent. So, closer to this 3 percent and for this the channel the slopes are recommended is 6 is to 1 that is cut slope. This is ridge 4 slope or what we are calling is front slope 8 is to 1 and back, back slope is 8 is to 1. So, 6 is to 1, 8 is to 1. H to 8 is to 1 are our recommended um, slopes from the table. So, that means we can come back here and we, we see that using the standard table we get SC is equals to 6 is to 1, SF equals to 8 is to 1 
and S B equals to 8 is 2 1. So, slopes we have take a, taken a decision regarding. So, now we need to choose the channel shape and determine its dimensions. So, let us say that we consider a triangular channel. So, triangular channel means we are saying that the depth of channel is h that is the depth of embounding or depth of cut uh, channel is h here in this case. So, obviously, the total cross sectional area that is the area that will be utilized for water flow. So, here that means the half is to 6 is to 1 times h because this is the channel here this is h this slope is 6 is to 1 this slope is 8 is to 1. So, that simply means that this width is 8 h and this width is 6 h and so two triangles. So, this triangle is half into 6 h into h and the other triangle is half into 8 h into h and this is how we can calculate the total cross sectional area which comes out to be 7 h square. Now, we can assume we just simply assume a value of h equals to 0.3 that is h value we are assuming. So, the cross sectional area is 1.27 square meters. We also require the weighted perimeter because we have to calculate the hydraulic radius. So, that means length of this and length of this sum of these two because we know these two values. So, we can always calculate using Pythagoras theorem. So, here uh, S 1 plus S 2 that is h square plus 6 h square h square plus 8 h square here it will be 8 h square and if we solve this it will come out to be 14.1 h for 14.15 h or the value of h we are assuming is 0.3. So, pitted perimeter is 4.24 meters. So, hydraulic radius will be ratio of A and P, A value we calculated is 1.27, P value we calculated 4.24. So, value of hydraulic radius is 0.3 meters. So, from there uh, 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 Manning's equation can be used for calculating the velocity which is n by n r by 2 r to the power 2 by 3 s to the power half. So, n value we are assuming as 0.04 r we have already calculated and the grade is already given so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0025. Uh, so, uh, using this the flow velocity we get is 0 0.56 meter per second which is non erosive uh, uh, velocity uh, uh, by h per recommendations and q of the channel is a times v a we have no v we know. So, it comes out to be 0 0.71 um, cubic meter per second. So, design channel has sufficient capacity because the capacity required was 0 0.165 cubic meters per second wherein we are calculating 0 0.71 cubic meter per second. So, now we can say that the channel has sufficient capacity. So, assuming 20 percent free board that is 0.2 h ridge height will be 1.2 h or 0.36 meters. So, this way we have designed the various cross sections or various parameters of the channel. So, the answers are vertical interval is 0 0.9 meters, horizontal interval is 30, terrace grades are 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 and 0.2 for each quarter length, terrace flow depth is 0.3, slope ratios are 6 is to 1, h to 2, 1, h is to 1, terrace ridge height is 0.36 and channel flow velocity of 0.71, then channel uh, flow capacity is 0.71 cubic meter per second. So, these are the various dimensions we have already designed. Now, we go to the third channel which is also a design channel design 800 meter long level broad terrace for a land having average slope of 4 percent maximum expected rainfall having 10 years recurrence interval is 18 centimeters. Infiltration capacity of the soil of the area is such that 40 percent of the rainfall is absorbed in the field and the region is subhumid and has clay loam. So, the data given are Length, length of level broad traces L is 800 meters, land slope is 4 percent, maximum expected rainfall having 10 years recurrence interval is 18 centimeters, infiltration capacity is 40 percent of rainfall and it is a subhumid region with clay loam soil. So, we need to estimate vertical interval 
for the purpose we have to use the same equation because it is a less humid region and normal soil. So, V i equals to s plus 6 by 10. So, V i comes out to be 1 meter because s is 4 percent and h i once V i is known h i comes out to be 25 meters. So, now we need to determine the maximum runoff volume and so maximum expected rainfall having 10 years reconciled interval is 18 centimeters and infiltration capacity is 40 percent of rainfall that simply means the runoff potential is 60 percent of rainfall because 40 percent is absorbed as infiltration. So, the level terrace system needs to design to handle the maximum runoff potential which is 60 percent of the rainfall. So, it is 60 percent of rainfall that means 0 0.6 or 0 0.18 or <coughs> 0 0.108 meters that is the maximum runoff to be stored. Now, the storage area which is the maximum runoff depth times horizontal interval. So, putting these values we get 2.7 square meters and here also we need to choose a channel shape and determine its dimension. So, let us consider a trapezoidal section with cut slope, front slope and back slope as 6 is to 1, 8 is to 1 and 8 is to 1. So, these ratio we are assuming here and uh, a trapezoidal section we are considering. So, that means the when we calculate the flow area it we have to consider three sections A 1, A 2 and A 3 because slope here is 6 is to 1 here it is A is to 8 is to 1. So, the cross sectional area so, 3 A 1 A 2 A 3 the first one is triangle half 6 6 H 2 H the second one is a rectangle B times H and third one is the triangle half 8 H times H. So, it is B H plus 7 H square. Since the storage area required is 2.7 square meters the cross section area of the channel should be equal to the required storage area. So, assuming B equals to 0.4 meters let us say that bottom width is 40 centimeters or 0.4 meters and if we put in the in this so B h plus 7 h square is 0.2.7. If we put in this equation B equals to 0.4 we get 7 h square plus 0.4 h equal to 2.7 or we can write 7 h square plus 0.4 h minus 2.7 equals to 0. So, quadratic equation we can use uh, solve using uh, straight formula which we know minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4 ac by 2 a. So, by putting the values of b, b this is b, this is a and this is c. So, putting these values here we get the value of h is 0 0.65 or 0 0.59. So, we select either of the two. So, we select h equals to 0 0.65 meters. So, assuming 20 percent free board that is 0.2 h ridge height comes out to be 0.78 meters and terrace width 8.78 is 6.24 meters. So, terrace the answers are vertical interval is 1 meter, horizontal interval is 25 meters, flow depth is 0.56 meters, channel bottom width 0.4 meters, slopes ratios are 6 is to 1, 8 is to 1 and 8 is to 1, channel ridge height is 0.78 meters and channel width is 6.24. 24 meters. So, these are this is all various parameters of this level uh, broad based terrace. So, now we take the last problem and that says the compute the depth of cut and fill and side slopes of a broad based terrace for 30 centimeter depth of flow on 8 percent land slope. Consider that the tillage operations are to be performed using machines and the width of machine is 4.27 meters. So, we have been given the depth of flow, land slope and the width of the machine. So, that simply means the data given are land slope s equals to 8 percent, channel depth h equal to 0.3 meters that is here h is given here this is h, this is h, this is the this is h is given here and machinery width is given is 4.27 meters. So, because machinery width, width of terrace is typically kept w equal to machinery width. So, w comes out to be 4.27 meters. So, from first problem we saw this equation c plus f equals to h plus s times w. Now, now I am putting the known value of h, s and w because h, s and w is known c plus f we come comes out to be 0.68 meters. So, this is what we get c plus f equal to 
0.64 meters. And since we normally use a balanced cross section where cut is equal to fill, so that means C equal to F will be 0.32 meters. And then front slope because front slope we know the width is width and the fall is edge which is 0.3. So, it is 4.27 by 0.3 that is 14.2. So, front slope ratio comes out to be 14.2 is to 1. Wherein for the back slope when we calculate back slope the elevation difference is h plus w s. So, here the slope ratio will be w divided by h plus w s w is 4.27 h is 0.3 w is 4.27 s is um, 0 0.08. So, that means it comes out to be 6.67. So, black back slope ratio comes out to be 6.67 is to 1. So, that means the cut and fill comes out to be 0 0.32 meters. The front slope ratio comes out to be 14.2 is to 1 and back slope ratio comes out to be 6.67 is to 1. So, with this we have seen that we can design uh, broad based terraces be it graded terrace or be it, be, be it a level terrace and also we can uh, find what should be the cut and fill for a given condition and what should be the uh, ratios uh, the uh, slope ratios. So, this, these are the problems, but as I have said earlier also that there can be other forms of the problem. So, if you solve some more problems for practice probably things will be even clearer, but I think that uh, with this much practice itself you will be able to design uh, broad based stresses. Thank you very much.